great. So, <laughs> between the time that I made that intro to now, it's been like a week. And, well, for one, I can't remember what I said in it. <laughs> um, which, I mean, you know, like, could have happened within five minutes of making the video. But also, like, part of the reason why it took me so long to sit down here and do the start to do these readings is because I don't know if it's like the Taurus sun in me, if it's my Virgo moon, blah, 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 you know, um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it's like, I, I didn't, I felt like I wanted to have something more prepared and I get stuck and hung up on these, like wanting something to be perfect, which it never is. And it's just almost like an excuse right so i don't know why am i talking about this i don't know um you know maybe it's just maybe you needed to hear it too that if you are delaying doing something huh other light um if you're delaying doing something if you're waiting for the perfect time for something there, there's no such thing <laughs> there just isn't and you know, like we start um, kind of like amping up on the anxiety around it too, right? Because then I started feeling anxious, like, oh my gosh, like looking at the date. Oh my gosh, like when was the last time I put out videos? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then for me, I just kind of shut down, you know, <laughs> which isn't good. That's not helpful for anybody. It doesn't make the anxiety go away. And that anxiety comes from knowing that I wanted to sit down here and I wanted to put out a message to you guys. I wanted to, you know, get some readings out there again. And um, the fact that I wasn't doing it was what was causing the anxiety. And the reason why I wasn't doing it is because I wanted to have something else that either added value to the reading or whatever, which is really kind of interesting because Venus just went retrograde right on Sunday. And that's the second house for me, which is about worth, worthiness, value, right? <laughs> and, and here I am going on and on about wanting something, whatever it is, to be perfect. And also the main message behind that being showing up exactly where you are and with exactly whatever tools that you have right now to do the thing. So with that being said, <laughs> I'm going to turn this into the intro video. <laughs> so you probably you won't even see the one that I was talking about that I just did a week ago because that, that has nothing now. I also, I realized that last month I didn't get around to doing um, human design profile readings and I do want to do those still. I'm like teetering between, you know, wanting to make those the priority and the zodiac signs secondary or, you know, kind of keep, because there's, you know, there's tons of videos from YouTube creators about zodiac signs. I haven't seen a single one about human design profiles or really anything else. And I think it's just, it's cool because it's, it's a different, it's just a different avenue to receive a message. You know, like any zodiac sign could be a 1-3 profile or a 2-5 a profile or whatever, right? Um... So I think I just answered my own question and I think I'm going to, for the time being, I'm going to lead with the human design profile readings. And if I get around to doing Zodiac readings in a month, then great. If not, um, it is what it is for the time being. I'm a manifesting generator, 5-1, emotional authority, and true to manifesting generator form. I have a million things going on, which is kind of why like my time is all of a sudden limited. And I am struggling to get all 24 videos out in a month. So um, that's okay because, you know, it's energy, right? And for right now, for whatever reason, I have a limited <laughs> availability of time, but also energy. I'm sacral, but that doesn't mean that I, I just, you know, 
I have endless amount of energy. Um, so, you know, we still need to be taking care of our sacral and, and giving it rest. But like I said, I just, I have a ton of stuff going on. And at some point, the energy is going to shift. And at some point, I will be able to put 24 videos out again. And, you know, it really goes into trust. That's a big thing with human design, too. It, they're, the major thing is deconditioning um, the ways that we were uh, structured to live our lives. And most of that is not listening to our own inner wisdom and guidance. And, you know, that's where the strategy and authority comes from. So without any further <laughs> delay, because I could keep going on and I probably will in, in the videos. But um, again, I'm going to lead with the human design profile readings. I am not going to worry about I, I like to have some sort of content um, that goes over everybody, each profile, just to give you, you know, like a different perspective from somebody else and their understanding of uh, what the profile says. I, I have some stuff buried in my, in my um, phone, but I'm not going to go, <laughs> I'm not going to go search for it this time. Uh, so going forward, I'll, you know, the next time we do these readings, I'll have some sort of content. But for now, we're just going to, yeah, treat it in some kind, uh, some kind of way. Okay, great. Thanks for listening to me ramble on at the beginning. If you made it through the whole thing, if you didn't, good for you. You know, like <laughs> there's no requirement to listen to me blabber on. So uh, anyway, uh, if you are here, you are for one or a opportunist investigator. And you guys are the only ones that have that juxtaposition or the fixed fate um, incarnation crosses. So I think there's... Let me see. I think there might be 96. Where am I pulling that number from? I don't know. It just dropped into my head. Uh, like 96 different juxtaposition um, incarnation crosses. But there's a big emphasis, emphasis on your um, design. No, your personality sun gate. And that kind of helping you um determine like you know the fixedness <laughs> so the the fourth line the opportunist line is all about you know community networking um you know acquaintances the first line is about investigation so your sense of security comes from your understanding of a subject or whatever it is you know um i also feel like first lines have a hard time being told like you you need to you need to discover it yourself like you need to read about it yourself you need to you know like research it yourself you need to ask your own questions about a thing um and i'm just saying that because i'm a five one and my first line like if i get something wrong or if i'm corrected about something and especially if it's something that i feel correct about but somebody is trying to correct me on it, I get pissed. <laughs> if I'm wrong about something, I am also pissed, not like at the person or the thing, but more so because I'm like, I was so sure about that. And again, you know, the first line comes with, you know, that sense of security comes from your, your understanding and your expertise on a thing. So with the fourth line, you know, some of your best opportunities are going to be found through people that you know, um, through your network. It's it's even like word of mouth, you know, like let's say you were looking for a job and you just mention it to a friend of yours and, you know, maybe they mentioned it to a friend and then that friend heard from somebody else that this place was hiring and then it somehow made its way back to you, right? Like that's the beauty of it. So if you ever do kind of find yourself a little stuck um, look within, look within your network of people, just start mentioning it, whatever it is, you know, it could be a date. It could be, like I said, it could be work. It could be, um, you know, a toaster. <laughs> if you're looking for a small kitchen appliance, <laughs> whatever it is, 
Um, but also, you know, just recognize too, I think the thing with fourth lines is, is that the importance of understanding that you are fixed and that fixedness might be uncomfortable for other people, especially if they can't get you to budge. Um, and maybe you have budged in the past and maybe you are recognizing how uncomfortable that is for you because you're not made to budge. <laughs> like Tom Brady is a for one if you if you know anything i mean you had to have probably heard about tom brady the football player at some point right but look what happened to him last year like he said he was retiring from football and granted it's football right i can't i don't know what his incarnation cross was i know that i looked it up though before and I can't remember, I should remember, if I'm going to use him as an example, I should know this, but I don't. So if you want to look it up, feel free. But, um, you know, like he kind of made this decision that for whatever reason, he wanted to play another season of football and, and mind was made up. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, his marriage dissolved, you know which is is sad that sucks you know like that relationships can be affected uh but you do need to follow your path and you know the correct people for you will show up for you right so let's get an oracle card i have a, a really good friend that um, is a 4-1 also and I just learned um, in the last couple months that she is a 4-1 and it makes so much sense <laughs> she is very fixed and she always has been for a long time there's just you know like something that she can't really let go of and I, I don't want to give too much information away although I mean you know I'm not really um, putting out her like identity or anything like that but um, but again the, my point in saying that though is that she knows that this thing that she you know kind of has this focus on is correct for her regardless of how other people feel about it regardless of how the path has opened up for her on it she knows that that's what she is supposed to be doing and there are a lot of people that understand that about her there are some people that don't and it is what it is right so this is first light beginning a new cycle lovely we have a bird's nest here this feels like you know winter going into spring it could be the other way around because we're in summer at least in the northern hemisphere right now and you know this could be of course autumn or fall with this um orange leaf here going into winter so um it does say first light it feels more like winter going into spring but you know i mean again it could be something that has to do with winter it could be something that has to do with next year you know winter going into spring something new a new cycle beginning let's get your tarot cards out we have the wheel of fortune beautiful even like look at the similarities between these two cards too just the circles i have love that we have the two of cups okay oh oh okay we have the tower card hmm We have the Nine of Cups, beautiful.
We have the death card and judgment. Holy God. <laughs> the world, queen of swords, strength. Hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> hmm. If you can hear my, my dryer, I apologize. You know, just hashtag life, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, I turn my dining room into my little tarot space and my, um, washer and dryer is like right off my kitchen. So I apologize. Hopefully that's not annoying. And if it is, sorry. So this is interesting because, you know, I'm going to read it both ways. This could be a romantic relationship or it could just be a partnership in some capacity. It doesn't have to be romantic. It could be a friendship. It could be business. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. But yeah, <laughs> beginning a new cycle. And again, right, I mean, this could be a relationship. It could be a business partnership in some capacity. There is definitely something that is is changing here and, and kind of in a, a, a big way. I mean... We have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, five major arcana cards out here and two minor arcana cards out here. So these are big energies. You know, the Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter. So it's Sagittarius. Um, I'm just going to point that out. I know we're doing obviously human design readings, but I'm going to say it anyway. There could be somebody with that sign. Scorpio is death. Aries is the tower. Judgment is Pluto. I don't know who's with Pluto. And then the world is Earth, obviously. <laughs> it's also, I find it interesting that we start with the Wheel of Fortune, which is a circle, and we end with the world. They're both sitting on top of lotuses, which I feel is kind of interesting. There's a dragon on top of this one. There's a person on top of this one. I think there's, there's some relevance to that so the wheel of fortune you know it, it talks about things changing even you know like i was kind of saying in the intro a little bit i think and if i'm repeating myself you know i'm geriatric and and my memory is trash but um you know there was a period of time for me that I had an abundance of time, right? I mean, like I, I had the ability to put out 24 videos in a month because I had the time, I had the energy to do it. And then it changed. <laughs> not in, not necessarily in a bad way, but it changed. The wheel shifted. And now, you know, like my, my time, my availability of energy, it's different. And it's just, it's being refocused right now onto whatever it needs to be focused on. So I don't ever see the Wheel of Fortune as being a bad thing ever. I always see it as being a good thing. I don't care where it shows up. But um, looking ahead, <laughs> you, it may not right away feel like a good thing. But it is. I can promise you that. And especially with a paired with the Nine of Cups. So there is there's some sort of wish that is coming true here for you. Because the Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment. I mean, we could see that she's blowing on a dandelion here, right? I mean, and at, when we were kids, we were kind of taught to do that and make a wish, right? And that's what she's doing. You know, and you could be wishing for this partnership, whatever it is, if you're wishing for a specific person to be in partnership with, to have a romantic connection with, the Two of Cups is about shared values. So we start with the Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups is overflowing. You have, again, an abundance of, uh, like your cup is so full that it's running over and you recognize that you have the ability you have the energy to where you can share it with somebody and that's where the two of cups comes in and we can see in the two of cups that there are two cups here this person is pouring into this cup but it's it's reciprocal like both people 
come into this partnership with their ace of cups with their full cup and whatever they give you are matching that energy right whatever you give you are getting back the same type the same thing so again right with these three cards there's some wish that's happening here something that you want something that you're manifesting something that you believe will make you feel good and feel fulfilled feel you know purposeful and that could be that it you know again partnership romantic platonic business <clears throat> however <laughs> this is where it gets real now <laughs> Because in order, it feels like in order for this to happen, there is something with the death card that comes to an end. And it's interesting because we have these two cards here that talk about transformation. Because the death card, it's more about rebirth than it is about death. And it's not, it is not that somebody is going to pass away it, it's not that it's more so that the energy of the thing is is shifting or that it needs to especially we have these butterflies here too so even going back to this first card anytime i see the death card i i recite the saying that goes every new beginning disguises itself as an end this could even be whatever this is that that the wheel of fortune and the nine of cups you know if you are if you are already in partnership and again whatever that is for you whether it's romantic business friendship whatever if you are wishing that that person or that situation would change to better reflect what you want out of it right like let's just for instance if you are partnered with a person in a romantic relationship if you are you know kind of um within yourself saying you know i i wish this person would be more whatever attentive supportive um i i wish they would take me out i wish they would you know, whatever the case may be right and you know if if that's if you're if you're wanting them to change a behavior i just don't think I, I don't see that happening i don't think that's what these cards are saying either i feel like what these cards are actually saying is that this is the thing that needs to come to an end or dissolve in some capacity because you're not getting what you want out of the thing whether you're putting, you know, like 90% in and they're putting in 10 or, you know, like it's not giving you what you want. Yet over here, it's like this hoping, wishing, you know, maybe you even see a potential in this partnership and you're just praying that, you know, the other person would see the same potential it's also, you know, recognizing your own growth, recognizing that there is something different within you. Maybe at one point this person was that thing and maybe they're not anymore. And also, you know, the reason why I'm even going in this direction, right, is because we have the tower card next. And the tower card, you know, I mean, it's getting struck by lightning. It's crumbling here. And that is what the tower is all about. It's sudden upheaval. It can be breakups. Um, it is a bit uncomfortable. The purpose of the tower, though, is to take out what is no longer serving you. And it's kind of like, I have found in my own life, the more that I resist 
even recognizing that this is happening because I feel like it, it starts to happen before we actually realize that it's going on. But the more that I resist it, the worse that it is. And then we have the judgment card. This is a 10. This is a 20. So I think that's an interesting <laughs> that we start with a 10. We end with a 20. I don't know. Like in my head, I just, you know, I feel like that has some level of significance because the odds of them actually coming out in this way is so rare that it has to mean something, <laughs> you know. But like I said, you know, the judgment card is a card that comes right before the world card. And I'm obsessed with the fact that the world card is here, too. I love a progression. Um, no matter what type of progression it is, I love a progression, especially when they're right next to each other. Um, but the judgment card, like I said, you know, both of these cards talk about transformation. This is more recognizing, like I said, right, that something needs to end in order for something new to begin. And especially with this beginning a new cycle card coming out, you know, I mean, there could even be uh, um, something changing within your relationship, but it is going to take a like a falling out or um, like a rock bottom type of thing to happen to kind of get this thing like going again and whether you know it survives the rock bottom or not obviously is going to be you know like dependent on your situation there's only one person in this card though so i think that is also significant but the judgment card it's at the end of the fool's journey so it says that everything that you've picked up from the fool until the judgment card the experiences, the heartbreak, the um, the loss, you know, everything that you have gone through, whether this has happened in the last month or the last 10 years, everything that has happened has gotten you to this point. And whether you, you see it right now or not, it is going to transform you. But also, it's going to transform you in the most beautiful effing way. Because it's also too, like, I just kind of get this, like, this vision of, you know, like this, this, this castle, you know, falling apart. And then this figure being there um, as like, you know, it, 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 like the, the layers or, you know, like peeling back the layers of the onion or something and how what's left is this strong smart person that you have become marching to the beat of your own drum like we were saying at the beginning right with you being fixed like this is literally marching to the beat of your own drum this is like getting back on your own path reconnecting you know like with yourself and what you know to be true for you and I just I, I want to just kind of keep emphasizing that it doesn't even have to be a room this could be family it could be a really close friend it could be a sibling you know whatever whatever it is and then we have the world card which is the end of a cycle I love these butterflies here butterflies are about transformation literally metamorphizing from one thing to a completely different thing which is kind of like what it what happened you know we have <laughs> is this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah that's a you might even want to see where leo is in your chart because venus is retrograde in leo right now so you might just want to see where leo is for you that's kind of interesting oh but Right. I mean, like this wheel turned into the world card here. Like I said, you know, there's the the lotuses, even the dragon turned into this person shape shifting, you know, <laughs> like also you may not you may not be able to see this. I can't I can't see the video screen, but there's these little um, fairies or like these little wisps um, that 
are part of the the tree branches so to me it always feels like being protected being divinely guided you know like there there are energies and beings around you that are supporting you and helping you through this process the queen of swords is very clear in thought they're going to cut through any bullshit look at all these butterflies too they're holding one there it's like again this powerful representation of owning your power owning what it is that you want the strength card there's leo i was just talking about leo this is being resilient it's that inner strength The Four of Pentacles, holding on. Um, the Two of Wands is planning for the future. There's a world card there. It's like the sky's the limit. The Nine of Swords is being, you know, it's a little bit of fear and doubt mixed in there. But then we have the Fool card. <laughs> I love this for you. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for allowing me to read your cards. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.